Today we're going to build the TETX AM tube transmitter kit. I've ordered it by the internet, through the internet of course, and it's a small AM tube transmitter. Here you see the parts like I uh, received them with a very good uh, instruction how to build it. So uh, we're going to get started now. All right. A little update now. Like you can see I have already fitted a few electronics into the circuit. <coughs> and I already uh, went to a little pro problem because on the instructions there are told you have to put uh, 471 PF here and here, but uh, that uh, it's not in the bags, so we have to buy those in the store. Also, they are talking about the, and I hope you can see it, the C9, and there is no C9 on the board. There is a 6, it's over here. There is a 7 and 5, they're talked about here. There is a 4, there's a 3, there's a 2, there's a 2, there's a 1. There is a something for the modulation, but no C10, uh, so, sorry, C9. So that's very strange about this uh, transmitter. I think uh, it's possible because it's also built for the shortwave transmissions with some other things in it. So that could be the problem. All right. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the stores and buy the 471PF, which must be here because it's not in the bag and then we come back to you later hello and welcome well, like you can see I'm um, restarting to build the uh, ITX home broadcast AM transmitter um, I've already put in the parts where the tubes will be I have uh, bought uh, uh, this uh, capture which was not uh, delivered with the package and now I'm uh, going further uh, just a little bit a few parts and then the transmitter will be ready to use yeah, and a big applause, it's ready. I'll make you a little tour around it. I hope you can see everything. at the front for the dialing to the frequency and the two tubes are now in place so it will be just a little thing we just have to fire it up to uh, let it broadcast all right welcome back uh, for the power supply I made from carbon and uh, a little box and you can put in your batteries like this a lot of them and for the power supply I made uh, clips I bought little clips a lot of them like here and I put them together with positive and negative 
as you can see here and it will be on the end one red one red and one black and that's why uh, how we're going to uh, power this little transmitter you see it's already in the test phase I just have to put on the power and I'm going to do it right now all right um, well you almost think you see something and you're imagining things but it's just a simple pack of the batteries delivering a voltage of uh, uh, almost 37.5 volt which will be on the transmitter at the moment uh, what you're going to see is also and that's very important is that there is a small very small battery on this part the first uh, impression was that this part had to have also high power but that's not uh, not uh, the thing what must be happening this part must be powered on 1.5 volts and that's only for the modulation so that's this part and the transmitter part which is standing there I think will be transmitting on yeah, 37.5 volts with a maximum of 90 volts now I want to go to 81 volts later on when I'm really trying this transmitter so I'm going to power it up I'm going to bring it back to you and we're going to see what this what's giving the power on yeah, 37.5 volts so wait on well I go fast because uh, the power is up to and I hope you can see it the power is up to almost 10 watt <laughs> Well, I cannot believe that at all, but yeah, the power is up to 8 watts on this moment. I hope you can see it. 8 watts, mm. 10, and the tubes are not lighting, so that's a little bit of a mistake. Which you're gonna think about. Whoa, the tubes are not lighting up. But the power is on here, and it's 10 watts. So, all right. I hope you enjoy it. You get here the very nice transmitter transmitting now on 70 volts, 37.5, with a power of 10 watts on a little cable so I think it will be around the 8 watts 9 watts maybe alright 